The car makers were led by the giant personality of Lee Iacocca, the boss of Ford. Iacocca even went to the White House to harangue the government, claiming these airbags are killing our profits. He persuaded them to delay the legislation. When Iacocca moved on to Chrysler, he continued the fight from there. Uh, we're not doing anything on airbags because we don't, we don't believe in them. I haven't believed in them for two decades because of all the problems. But Iacocca was about to have the rug pulled from under him. In 1984, under pressure from Ralph Nader, the agency responsible for purchasing all government cars stipulated airbags. To everyone's amazement, Ford broke ranks, bid for the contract, and started installing airbags as quickly as possible. Iacocca was left wrong-footed by this move, but not for long. Ford, GM and Honda won't have airbags in all their cars until 1994. By that time, approximately 60,000 airbags will have deployed in Chrysler-built vehicles. Chrysler were going to install more airbags more quickly than anyone else in the world. I couldn't believe it. This car started coming right at me. I stood on the brakes and bam! Airbags were suddenly a commercial proposition, and Iacocca their number one fan. There's the airbag in my lap. It saved your life. Chrysler puts an airbag in every car we build in the U.S. Japanese automakers don't. An airbag can make a real difference. Right, Ron? That's right. With the capitulation of the industry's chief opponent of airbags, the war was over. By 1990, every manufacturer was racing to install as many as possible. But the problems everyone had been aware of back in the 70s had not gone away. <laughs> Six-year-old Kyle Lehman. His mother made this home video of Kyle graduating from his nursery class. Her son is now one of the central characters in the most controversial safety issue facing Americans. We were leaving the house for to swim lessons and Kyle was strapped in the front seat and Cody was in the back in his car seat. We took a gravel road and going around the, the curve we hit head on with another vehicle and the airbags inflated. I just remember the real loud sound in my head feeling funny and the smell and it was quiet and I got Cody out of the car because after I got out, Cody was crying and I got him out of the car. And then it was quiet. And all I remember is Kyle from the neck up, the mark on his neck. And he was dead. I just remember my baby being dead. It's an American tragedy. Whilst nearly all Europeans belt up now, one third of all Americans still won't. So their airbags have to be powerful enough to stop an unbelted adult. The American bag explodes at up to 210 miles an hour. A child leaning forward to adjust the radio or sitting on the edge of their seat, as children often do, is in mortal danger. Up to date, airbags have killed some 60 Americans, most of them children. But this tragedy has tended to conceal the fact that in the 1990s, something remarkable has happened. Safety was an issue whose time had come. Who knows what trials life will throw at you? So for your protection, every Corsa has a rigid steel safety cell. Volvo's technologically advanced side impact protection system. Crumple zones, front and rear, and twin side impact bars in all doors.
The word now is safety sells. The Volvo 340, tested by dummies, driven by the intelligent. Billions have been poured in. Every company now has its own safety division, jostling for preeminence with engineering and styling. It's a bizarre, high-tech business where cars are now crashed without so much as a scratch. A Renault encounters a carelessly mislaid concrete block. We've seen a real sea change in terms of the acceptance of crash performance and safety design by the manufacturers. And this has come about, I think, because people are a lot more aware of it. They, they want to be protected and they're willing to pay for it. Safety now sells cars, so uh, it's here to stay. And, and in the future, we're going to see a tremendous amount of better safety coming into vehicles. We've come a long way in 30 years. Our cars are much safer now. However, it's a success story without a happy ending. Despite the fact that it's now more difficult to kill yourself than ever before, more people do. The trend in road deaths is once again on the way up. There is strong evidence that the more engineers do to make road travel safe, the more dangerously we drive. We've fixed the car, but can we ever fix the driver? <laughs>